Hi gang! In this video, we're going to make a seamless tartan plaid with a twill weave in Adobe Illustrator. Before we get started, if you'd like to support my channel, please give this video a like. Let's get to it! I found this swatch of a wool tartan and I thought it was beautiful and that I'd like to recreate it in Illustrator. So why don't we do that? We're going to start by pulling colors from this and to do that I'm going to draw a little square here and let's copy it a few times so we have one for each color. I'll hold my Alt or Option key and drag down a copy and then Control or Command D to duplicate. To pull the colors, we are going to use the eyedropper tool, but we need to adjust the settings before we can start using it. To do that, double click, and we are going to change, first of all, the point sample from point sample to 3 by 3 average. That's going to give us a more accurate color than a single point. Then we need to make sure that appearance is unchecked on both sides so that it will select from the image I've placed. We'll click OK, and now we can pick our colors. When you're selecting colors from a plaid, you always want to find the place where the colored stripes overlap. So in this case, the yellow overlaps the yellow. I can click right there. I'm going to hold my Control key to go back to my black arrow, select the next square, and let's grab where green overlaps green. We'll select the next one and get a section of blue, and finally, we've got a black, but it's not a true black. It's a little more of a charcoal. So let's grab that color. Now we've got our swatches. To get them into our swatches panel, we're going to select all of them, click on the little file folder on the bottom, click OK, and that's going to add a swatch group of these colors to our swatches. So we can get rid of these. When you're creating a plaid, you need to figure out where the repeat is, and it helps to drag out some guides. In order to drag out guides, you need to have your rulers turned on, and to do that, you'll use Control or Command R to turn your rulers on and off. Once they're turned on, we can click inside the ruler and drag out a guide. I'm going to start just to the right side of the skinny black stripe as my starting point. And then I'm going to drag out another guideline and drag it to the same place on the other side. So when we get to the next skinny black, we're going to go and grab the outside or the right side of that second skinny black line. And that between these two lines is going to be our repeat. Let's right click and lock our guides to make sure they don't move and we can start creating our stripes. I'm going to grab the rectangle tool. And for now, the height of the stripe doesn't really matter as long as all of the heights are the same. So I'm going to drag out what is going to be my blue stripe. I will fill it with blue. And now I'm going to alt drag a copy of this. So I'm going to grab my black arrow. I'm going to alt drag, alt shift drag a copy of this so that it snaps in place right next to the first one. This one is going to be our black, and we can see it's a little bit wider, so I'm going to drag the stripe wider and fill it with black. The next one is a wide green stripe with a skinny yellow stripe inside it. So we're going to do this one a little bit differently. We're going to grab the black. I'm going to Alt, Shift, drag a copy, but we're going to make this the yellow. So I'm going to make it really skinny so it's the width of our yellow stripe. And I'm not going to worry about the placement just yet, but we will fill that with yellow. We're going to drag out another black stripe. And this time we're going to butt it right against the first black and we're going to drag out the width to where the green stripe ends and fill that with green. Now I want to make sure that the yellow stripe is centered on the green stripe. So I'll select both of them holding the shift key, release the shift key and click one more time on the green. See how it's glowing? That defines it as the key object or the object that everything will align to. Now if we click Align Center, the yellow stripe will center itself on top of the green stripe. Next, we've got another black stripe. So we are going to hold the Alt and Shift key again and drag our black stripe into place. Make sure it snaps. 
And now we've got skinny blue, skinny black, skinny blue, skinny black. So we're going to drag this again. Let it snap into place. Let's get the width right for the first blue stripe. Fill it with blue. And now we can duplicate it again till it snaps into place. This one's black. Duplicate again. This one is blue. And one more black. We want it to snap into place and black. And now we've got our stripes. I'm going to right click and whoops, we're going to release everything that's selected, right click and hide guides because we don't need them anymore. And we don't need our little template anymore either. So I'm just going to move this up and out of the way for a little bit. Now we need to make sure that this is a perfect square. We know that the width is correct because of all our stripe widths that we created, so we may need to adjust the height. So I'm going to select the whole thing and group it together, Control or Command G. And now we can go over to Transform and check the width and the height. And we can see they are two different numbers. So we're going to copy the width, Control or Command C, and we're going to paste it in the height so that we now have a perfect square. Those are our vertical stripes and now we need to rotate this in order to get our horizontal stripes. Double click on rotate. We're going to type in 90 degrees and copy. And now we've got our horizontal stripes as well as our vertical. We're going to move our vertical stripes out of the way for the moment and work with the horizontal stripes. In order to create the twill weave, we're going to take our pen tool and we're going to draw a line holding the shift key so it's on a 45 degree angle that is a little bit longer than our square. Let's change the stroke weight to something that would look good as our twill lines and I'm guessing one point might work very nicely here. I think that looks about right. But we don't want this to be a stroke. We actually need this to be a rectangle or a shape. I'm going to remove the fill and I'm going to go up to Object, Path, Outline Stroke. And now instead of a stroke, we actually have a rectangle. We'll need to fill that rectangle with a color that's not part of our plaid. So how about a hot pink? Now we're going to move this into place. Grab your black arrow. We're going to select just that pink line and we're going to drag it up until it snaps into place in this upper left hand corner. And you can see it says intersect when you get it in the right spot. We're going to do the same thing in the lower right hand corner. Hold your Alt or Option key, grab that, drag it down to the lower right hand corner until it says intersect and snaps into place. And now we're going to go ahead and blend. We're going to select both of these lines and we're going to go Object, Blend, Make. And that is going to create a line in between the other two. Now we need to create a lot more lines than this, but first I'm going to zoom in really close so we can make sure that we're happy with the size of the lines. And as I'm looking at this, I can see that I did not do a perfect job here with my stripes. So I'm going to fix that before I continue on going to select these two stripes. Well, actually, I'm going to double click to go into isolation mode. Then I'm going to select these two stripes and I'm going to nudge them down so that they snap into place. And we may need to make alterations on our stripes going in the other direction, but we will deal with that when we get there. With our pink line selected, we'll go up to Object, Blend, Blend Options. We're going to change the spacing from smooth color to specified steps. And then we're going to use the arrow key on our keyboard to increase the number of steps. And we want them really close together. Basically, we want them so close that the width of the pink line is the same as the space between the pink lines. And that looks about right. The only caveat is that it must be an odd number. I currently have 116, so I'm going to need to go one more in either direction to change it to 117. If you have an even number, the twill pattern will not line up and be seamless. So odd number, very important. Going to click OK. 
Let's zoom back out. And now I'm going to go Object, Expand, because we don't want this to be a blend anymore. I'm going to turn off Fill, and we're only going to expand the object. Click OK. And now instead of a blend, it's a bunch of really skinny pink lines. We'll select the lines and the stripe. We're going to go up to Pathfinder and select Divide. Right click, Ungroup. And we can release this. Now we want to delete all of these pink lines. To do that, we can grab the magic wand, click on one of the pink lines, and it's going to select all of them. And now you can hit delete on your keyboard to remove those lines, and we've got our twill pattern. Now remember we changed the distance here, so let's make sure that our other one matches. The height now, let's go back to transform, the height is the correct one on this one. So I'm going to copy that number, control, copy, and then I'm going to select this one and we're going to change the height. So we'll select this and paste it. Now they should match again. Let's make sure that our twill pattern here is grouped together. So right click group or control G, command G. We are going to align these, so we'll select both of them and make sure that they are aligned center, center, and that is our twill. We can select it, open up our swatches panel and drag it right in, and we have just created our seamless tartan plaid. I'm gonna move this out of the way. Let's draw a nice big rectangle on the page and go ahead and fill it with our beautiful new plaid. And that is how you do it. I just happen to have a little kilt here that is dying to be filled with plaid. So let's go ahead and do that. Gonna select it and click on the plaid to fill. Now, obviously it's much too big in scale for this. So I'm gonna double click on the scale tool we are going to change this to, let's see, 25% is probably about right. We're gonna make sure that transform objects is turned off and transform patterns is turned on so that we don't change the size of the kilt, only the size of the pattern. Let's turn preview off and back on and you'll notice that the size of the pattern is not changing. Sometimes that happens in Illustrator when you turn off transform objects. I really don't know why, but if you click okay, Release your selection. Whoops, let's get into the black arrow, sorry. Release your selection and then select it one more time and again, double click on the scale tool. This time it will allow you to do it. Don't know the reason for that, but it seems to happen pretty frequently. Click OK. Now I know generally kilts the pattern is horizontal, but I really like my plaids on the bias. So I'm going to double click on rotate. We're going to type in 45 for the bias. Again, transform objects is turned off. We only want to transform the patterns and click OK. And now we've got our beautiful seamless tartan in the kilt. I hope you learned something new. If you did, please give this video a like. And if there's anything else you'd like me to cover in a future video, please let me know in the comments. I would be happy to oblige. See you in the next video.